I spent 52 years with a company. I spent really a lifetime in servant leadership one way or the other. So I'm going to tell you at 83 what it looks like, you know, in eight minutes. <laughs> so what is stewardship? This Today it's about stewardship and trusteeship. Andy just made a great uh, statement about the human assets in our, in our society. And a great comment was made about the environment. Well, for me, it includes all these things. It's a personal journey. It's physical for me, and it's spiritual. They go together. I start my morning, and I start with some spiritual. I do some physical stuff, and 45 minutes later, I'm ready to go. Uh, it took a lot of years to get that discipline in, but it works for me beautifully. There's professional, there's family, there's time, life itself, there's financial assets, there's your position in society, influence, you all influence a bunch of people. Don't underestimate your influence, your example. The environment. Well, to put this into context, uh, my priorities start with the most important. My maker, my dear partner in life, our children, professional responsibilities, giving back to the community and industry. The use of my time is varied, but generally my uh, formula has been, and up until a year ago, I actually kept track of all this all these years, uh, is a third family, a third professionally, and a third community. When I was single, at one point, I was 70% community, starting a business up. Uh, at one point, professionally for about four years in an international organization, I, sp I couldn't believe it. I spent 40% of my time for four years turning three of us, moving it from point A to point B, and it stuck for 30 years. Um, so that's how that looks. So as a trustee, my personal journey, the physical, the spiritual, what does stewardship look like? Professionally, I think, is the easiest way to uh, communicate with you. Safety has always been number one. Who would want to hurt somebody? Who would want somebody to go home in a different condition than when they came to work? So in our company, it's a safer, the safest place in your life is at work, and we have a company that has risks. Normally in the past, we have been 300% better than the industry average. That's a lot. And it, it escalated up, escalated up, still exceptionally well. Employees, who delivers the services? We're in a service business. There are few companies that aren't in the people business. In fact, I don't think any, but some are more intense than others. We're totally people. Without the people, you can't do anything. I always start with them personally. You know, where are you at? What are you trying to do? What are the elements of your life? And then I give them feedback or give them some suggestions. I have little home runs regularly. I take anybody that's legitimately interested in professional development, and I'll mentor them. I don't have to know them, but they got to give me some information first. When I'm done doing an in-depth interview, they'll end up with something they agree would be good for them to do, and don't come back until you do it. I mean, that is the way I operate. Uh, so people are important. It is kind of what we've made for. Customers, they are the people we serve. They pay the bills. We have to add value to customers. If you can't add value long-term, Somebody else will. Vendors, bankers, bonding companies, those who service us, they are all part of the family. They all need to be respected in what they do. Vendors, we used to do an annual survey with the people that did the work and say, what do you think of this vendor? Shipments, purchase orders, pickups at the counter for emergencies, and they would rate them all, and we would share that with our vendors. And the best guy got a plaque. And boy, they put that plaque right up in front of everything. Uh, very proud to have received it. Never had received it before. So that's what the business looks like. Now, let's take a look at the stewardship part of it. You could say that with stewardship, but I'll get more explicit. In the family, uh, early on, uh, Sue and I agreed, young teenagers, that our estate would go back to the community. I mean, I'm just a steward. I'm passing through. What am I going to do with it after I'm gone? 
A lot of people like to, they have their, everybody has their own way of doing this. And by the way, I, I consider my, I used to consider myself a grain of sand on the beach. And then I start sailing the oceans in the world. And I looked up at night on, when I was on night watch, and it was just magical to think that I was a grain of sand on the beach when I look up at this gorgeous, brimming with brightness sky. And I said, this is really silly. I am a particle inside of an atom. And the universe, as far as we know it, is 52 billion light years from one end to the other. And we know, we think there's one universe, but we're now finding out there are more universes than we have stars in our sky. Our Earth is 13 billion years old. So anybody that thinks they got the answer is kind of silly. Uh, it's a moment in time. So I've always gone at things with that premise. I'm always curious and always asking. So in the family, we prepared our children for life. Uh, the way we raised them, the examples that we hope we provided. Uh, as I mentioned before, nobody's in jail and nobody's in the hospital and our kids are turning 50. So it's okay. No divorces, which is really unusual. That's a blessing. I have nothing to say about that. Um, and we have 11 grandchildren the oldest of which is now in college, she's 21 or 22, the youngest is 11 or 12, I can't keep track of them all, it keeps changing. <laughs> um, and they're all doing fine, each in their own way. Other people would tell me they're exemplars. Um, professionally, the company, 52 years, started the company with an ethic, kind of uh, was repelled in New York from I wonder to run World's Fairs, ran one very successfully with no money because I got there and my partner said, well, Dick, um, we're going to split the profits, but I don't have any money left and you got to run a world a worldwide promotion. So we did. And we, after the first day, the exhibitors said, everything you've done, uh, we don't have to have anything for the rest of the week and we're ready to sign up for your next show. But I got really educated in New York. Uh, and I decided I didn't want to run World's Fairs. So I came back, effectively bought my dad's business, three to six people. When there was three, he had cash in the bank. When there was six, he was short. That's how he kept his accounting. Um, told him what I wanted to do, and he said, fine, you do that with your money, and you take care of all the problems. I just want to do what I've been doing and make what I've been making. So that began the journey of this ethical model that you could go to when the I system was coming in, up and down the expressways across the country, and count on them to give you rational pricing, good service, a predictable operation. Uh, and that was the model. Years later, they said, we want to write this down, people. We like what this is. We got to write it down and tell people. I said, no, just provide the example, please. Just people understand what you do, not what you talk about. And so, I said, go ahead and write it down. If you... No, no, you write it down and we'll approve it. So I wrote it down. The teachings of the Old Testament, the example of Jesus. And so that's how we proceeded and we after about five, six years into the business. Now the problem is you've made a decision that you're going to give everything back to the community. You're getting your children started very well. Education means experiences as well as education. We would put experiences higher than than the actual classroom. And they were all pretty well suited, and they all were quite different. Um, so what do you do with the biggest single asset you have? Well, 10 years of ruminating, asking everybody. We said, we're going to sell it to the employees, not an ESOP. This is a straight sale. They got to keep their cash, has got to buy it, and we'll sell it to them what effectively was 10% of the value. That was a $110 million gift to the employees. They have to sell it the same way we sold it. They can't merge it. They can't sell it. They can't liquidate it. And the way in which the stock is bought and sold will continue. Now, you can't do that legally. So we have a D stock that has super voting rights that you have to get the D stock to agree to that. And the D stock is outside directors in a family foundation controlled by them approved by the IRS. Lovely IRS story there. I mean lovely IRS story. Not what you would expect. Um, but it took five years. And they kept checking and checking and checking. They were, what's the deal here? 
And I will tell you in that context also, there are people in the company that work for us, and after about five years or so, they'll say, Dick, sit down, I want to tell you something. I came into the company, and after a couple of years, I said, yep, what you're doing, you're actually doing what you say you're doing. But I've spent years trying to figure out what the angle is. And I just figured it out, and I want you to know, there isn't any angle. There isn't any angle. We're just the stewards, my perception. Now, what do you do with the rest of the money? Uh, you get real estate and stocks. My uncle told me how to invest in stocks, buy at the low, sell at the high. My folks told me how to invest in real estate. You buy and keep and do your own maintenance and all that sort of thing. So we did a little of all that. All did well. Everything kept growing because we were good stewards. That's my whole focus. I'm not economically motivated at all. But if you have something, use it well. I consider it a gift to me. Now, I worked really hard my whole life. I still am uh, at things that I really feel passionate about. So uh, the rest of the money we have put into two community foundations and one private foundation the funds to support character education nationally, character education in Wisconsin substantially, and um, servant leadership in the world. And all two of those organizations have to do is balance their budget once in two years, and they get a nice chunk of money. And that's in perpetuity. So that's what we've done with, with the rest of the money, and that's still evolving. That model is running. We're just moving assets and uh, getting people accustomed to this process. So that's community. 